What's good, everybody? What's good, everybody? What's good, my my brother from another mother, like Law Nation says? What's good with you, Law? If you're still in here, I love you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you, T. Smooth said, NFL Network who You know how we do. What's good with everybody? We're going to talk about a guy that I don't know if he's going to make the squad, but I really want him to. But let me give my shout-outs to everybody's in here right now. T. Smooth, TXTV, J. Outlaw Perez. What's good with you, baby? The Lunatic, John Jones, Law Nation, my dog for life. Thurston Howe the third, Marvin Hart, Grove the third, the the senior. I'm sorry, you, you the senior. I apologize. Joe Martinez, what's good with you? Uh, Ryan Gandler, T. Sizzling, all up in here. Let's go, man. Let's 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 have a good time today. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to appreciate everybody that's in the feed <clears throat> right now. I got a guy that I'm going to talk about, but I got some good interviews for you guys. I want you to listen to. I got some Mike Nolan. I got some Al Harris, who I think these are. are, Well, obviously, Mike Nolan is the new defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. Al Harris will be assisting and working with the cornerbacks while Lindquist will be going with the safeties. Uh, But that's huge. And I believe this kid that we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to jump right into him. How y'all doing once again is Chris, Chris Westery. Now, first of all, look at this picture, man. What up, Daryl? How you doing, Mike? What up, Tavis Banks? What's good with you? First of all, you remember when Brandon Carr had this number? And I, I'm not going to even hate on Brandon Carr. Brandon Carr had a pretty decent career with the Cowboys. Yes, he didn't maybe, say, live up to that contract number. Um, but Brandon Carr wasn't terrible with the Cowboys. Okay? Brandon Carr wasn't terrible with the Cowboys. But... Hey, ho, John Jones with the $10 holla, and then the lunatic coming with the $5 holla right after that. This week, this week we're going to remind the NFL world it's all about the Cowboys. You know it. You know how we do. But you remember when, uh, appreciate y'all both, John Jones, you know how we do. And I'm going to talk about something for you, my fans, later on, if I, that's what we want to call it. But I got something back for you guys. I'm giving back to you guys, Okay. I know how much y'all give to me, but I'm going to give back to you guys this year. And that's why you need to become a member. And I'm going to be starting that membership this week. So you need to become a member because I'm going to give back and you're going to love when I'm going to give back to you guys. But anyway, let me not, let me not trip out. Let me not trip out. Remember when Brandon Carr wore that uniform? That wasn't a bad jersey for Brandon Carr. And Brad, Brandon Carr was not a bad, terrible player with the Cowboys, especially when he went from $10 million to $5 million. I was mad as hell at Brandon Carr when he was making $10 million a year. But when he went down to five and took the finally took the pay cut, I wasn't mad at Brandon Carr. But that number 39 looks really, really good on Westry. I don't know about y'all, but, man, that looks good on him. <sighs> that looks good on him. Now, Here's a disclaimer I'm going to give for Westry before I show some tape of Westry. Now, first of all, I know Westry was undrafted. I know he um, came out of Kentucky. We understand that. Um, We know that uh, Chris Richard, the last regime, pretty much got him. You know how Chris Richard loves the tall cornerbacks. And here's his measurements. They say it's a 6'4", about 200, and he's all legs, and he's a big kid. Like, I actually seen him at training camp. He's a big kid. Like, he's towering. He's all legs. He was imposing. I don't know how he looks compared to this year because you had a whole year on the practice squad to get bigger, work out, get stronger. Hey, ho, star boy, 50, what a 199, holla. Bleacher Report says we get gross matos. I'm not mad at that. I'm not tripping because you got a lot of uh, things that are covered. But with Westry right here, it is combine. He's actually measured at 6'5". So you remember when we had a cat on our team and he played safety with the Cowboys? He was from Florida State, Pat Watkins. Remember Pat Watkins? He's like a 6'5 safety. I wanted him to do so damn good because I was like, oh, we got a 6'5 safety. I love them big, tall safeties. Remember Pat Watkins from Florida State? I think he played a few. had a pretty, pretty couple decent years, I think. Uh, with the Cowboys, but we love those tall guys. But one of the things that everybody was in love with when you got Chris Westry, even though he went undrafted, and I'm gonna tell you the reasons why I think he went undrafted. But at a six foot four, six foot five, he measured at six five at the combine. Six foot five, two hundred pounds, four three forty. And we're gonna show that film where he ran that actual forty at his pro day. But Everybody loves tall corners. I don't mind tall corners, and we're going to talk about that too. 
But you just can't find that. That's a freak of nature. Six four, six five, four three forties, long and linear, and you can use that length to basically play some good press coverage, bracket a corner, I mean bracket a receiver and swallow him. And basically the reason why you say Chris Richard wanted to have a westery on the team is because of those long body and those long arms. So remember how he was all the the thought was that he didn't teach the guys to turn their heads, but because of their length, hey ho, Daryl Sharp with the five dollar holla, and I appreciate you because me and you keep tack on Twitter, and I appreciate you jumping in there for me, big dog. Love you for life, and I will keep it up for you, and I appreciate the little emoji. But you remember when Chris Restry, I mean, pretty, I mean, Chris Richard basically was like, "You ain't got to really turn your heads, but I want long corners." So when they turn, so when the ball goes over the head, they ain't really got to turn their head all the time, but that length is gonna when they stretch out their arms, they're gonna be able to block or knock the ball out. You put their hands out if you have a long corner like a Westry six four six five because remember, and he's gonna talk about himself, Brandon Browner. Brandon Browner was 6'4". Richard Sherman was 6'3". Um, I believe uh, – what was the cat that went to – from there and went to Miami, didn't do nothing, then he went to Philadelphia. I think he – Maxwell, I believe. I think he was like 6'1". So we know he loved the tall corners, but one of the reasons why he liked them was because they played a lot of zone, cover two, cover three. They played that uh, Seattle. Um, and if you look at Chris Westery – he fit that bill in. Um, he got picked up by Richard because if you watch his tape at Kentucky, they played a lot of cover zone. They played a lot of cover two, and they played a lot of cover three. Not a lot of man press, but I think he can play it. But they played a lot of cover, and that's what you saw the Cowboys playing last year, a lot of cover two. You saw it, but you saw cover one single high. But it was a lot of cover two going on, and you need a athletic-type corner if you're playing a cover two because he's got to be able to come up there um, playing that cover zone, but he's got to be able to make good tackles. he got to be a good tackler, which he's not. Hopefully we can get that rectified because I believe that's one of the reasons why he dropped. But you see why Richard liked him. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna show you a couple things that um, – one from Westery – OK, and then two, I'm going to show some Mike Nolan and Al Harris that people that can be contributors to him possibly making this team and hopefully doing something, because there's a roster that the Cowboys have right now. But when you look at it from top to bottom, it's not dynamic. They are going to draft a corner, maybe two. But why wouldn't you still have a chance with a guy who's six foot four, six, five, 200 pounds, could get bigger, could be 210, 215. 4-3 speed, you just don't want to throw that away. So I am rooting for this kid. I am rooting for him. So let's listen a little bit about this Westry. And I like what he says in this interview. I'm going to skip in the interview. But I like his willingness. I like his attitude. No, he going to run. Check this out right quick. What's up, Sheila? How you doing, baby? Those long legs. And what a job he Byron Maxwell, look yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Covering ground. Goodness. 4-3-1. Hey, ooh. Chris Westry was a 4-3-1. And I'm telling you, I think that his second or third step. He stumbled. He like, stumbled. Yes. You saw that, too? I had to turn my head you on that You saw that, one. that too? 4-3-1. <laughs> Boy, you might make you some money. <laughs> You're still a scrub, though. Sitting here at UK Pro Day 2019 with the Pro Day Phenom, the Chris Westry. How you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? You, yeah. Chris, Chris Westry, what you can bring to the table. I'll fast forward. I want y'all to hear this part. To, um, an NFL team. Uh, for one, you know, my length and my speed and, you know, my willingness to even play special teams. You know, I love to play special teams. And, and that's a, a thing that, you know, a lot of people don't like to do or they don't even do. But, you know, I'm, I'm a real uh, special teams head, and I feel like, you know, I could contribute you know, early on special teams. I want you to watch this now. Even I'm gonna show you this. Even he had this little sack, but he needs to be more physical. He don't. There's there's negatives, and that's the reason why you went undrafted. But let's. I just like listening to the kid. I like the kid. I like this kid. I want him to oh, man, prosper. Sure. I want him to you know, make it. All his examples throughout the means, you just know the guys he show you. When he shows you Richard Sherman, when he shows you Brandon Browner, you get the message. Like that's that's just, that's what he likes. Did you think of any other team when you were getting ready to sign, or you look? chose the Cowboys be probably because of that this is what you, you fit what he wants. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, the thing, uh, when I came on my visit, you know, I was so, you know, and it was just, you know, a relationship I had with Coach Urshar. You know, it was just, it was just that easy. You know, first day, 
the first day I was here on my 30th visit, I was like, yeah, this is this got to be home. Shout out to my vid uh, video from Cowboys Alert. Shout out to them for the video. But also, let's go to Mike Nolan because everybody's been talking about, see, here's the thing with, now, I know all you guys, he couldn't get on the field. He went undrafted for a reason. The run of the reasons, I'm going to tell you why he probably went undrafted. And I'm going to I'm gonna see if y'all think what y'all think about this. One of the reasons why Chris Westery went undrafted, if you watched his tape, when you're a 6'4 corner, everybody wants the tall cornerbacks now, the 6'1s, the 6'2, a 6'3, because you have these receivers now that are coming out of college, high school now. I've seen them. I coach them. Um I've coached them. They're tall now. They're 6'3", they're 6'4", they're 6'5". They're coming out of high school that length. They're going into college that length. So now defensive coordinators want to combat that, and that's why the taller cornerback has been the, the thing. But if you really watch a lot of tall corners, they're not super successful. Yes, they have the length. Yes, they can swallow you. Yes, they have the bracket. But if you have a receiver who's about a 5'11", 6 foot, maybe 6 foot 1 receiver and you're a 6 foot 3, 6 foot 4 corner, one of the problems that you will usually have if you're that tall is that you're not going to break down and be able to open your hips as quick as that receiver is. Number 1, you are a corner and you're going backwards and the receiver's going forwards. But as much as people that love that length with tall corners, it's harder for them to get lower. It's almost like when you're playing basketball. I don't know if any of you guys play basketball, but if you played basketball and you're a taller person guarding a shorter person, and if that shorter person has a lot of speed or can dribble that basketball really good and has speed, well, yes, If you're what you're going to do is use your length. So you're going to let that short point guard get to the hole on you, and what you're going to do is use your length to try to block his shot. Because you know why? He's more likely going to be quicker than you because, number one, he's shorter than you and he's more compact. Usually when you're a taller person, especially if you're a corner, they don't have the hips to open and transition as quickly as a shorter receiver does. And that's why they have problems. That's why they play on the outside. They can't play in a slot, except if you're like a Dominique Mar uh, Cromartie, who was about 6'2", and he played – Lovely in the slot. But why? Because his athletic hips, he can open and close his hips. And that's one of the things the taller cornerbacks deal with. So that was probably a little bit of his issue. If you watched him at Kentucky, they played a lot of zone. Okay, so you didn't see a lot of that, of the twitchiness, but I believe he can do it. But one of the problems, I believe he didn't get drafted as well. He was a terrible tackler. I want to show some tape, but I don't know if that damn Illuminati is going to hate on me. But – if you watch his tape, even on that blitz, he's not – he pulled up on that blitz. He's not super physical. i seen the tape. He doesn't like to tackle. I mean, he had a quarterback break through a, a, a hole um, and was going for a touchdown, and basically the linebacker had to come and make the tackle, and he's running right beside him not making the tackle. So he's not physical at all. That's one of his problems. With that height and size, you want him to be more physical and use that size to press receivers. Use him as a press cover corner because that size can swallow uh, a receiver. But if you're not physical, it doesn't matter. So he's got to get that together. But the good thing is you saw Donovan Lumba was with the team, right? Daniel Wise and Donovan Lumba both with the team, both gone. But Westry still there. Now, let's look at who is actually right now with the Cowboys in the cornerback position. Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, Chidobe Awuze, Maurice Canada, who I like him as a slept-on pick, C.J. Goodwin, D.J. Wright, Deontay Burton, Savion Smith, and then, of course, Westry. Now, when you look at that, when you listen to that from top to bottom, it's not terrible with Awuze, Jordan Lewis, and Anthony Brown. They're not terrible corners. They're not saying, oh, that cornerback is just shafty. Yes, you're going to need to draft a corner, and they are going to, and I think they – I personally said they're going to draft two corners in this draft. So it could hurt Westry. But once again, you don't see 6-4, 4-3 speeds. So that can help him. And when you see a Al Harris in the fold and a Mike Nolan in the fold, give him a chance, maybe they can develop this kid and I am rooting for him. Am I saying he's going to make the roster? No. Am I saying he's going to be dynamic and be a dog on the team? No. But what I am saying is I like that size. He does have some good traits that you can work with, and you don't want to just get rid of that, and your coaching can develop him.
especially when you have guys that are in their last year of their deals. Jordan Lewis in his last year of his deal. Chidobe Awuze is last year in the deal. We see that they uh, re-signed Anthony Brown, and I called Anthony Brown the Orlando Skandrick of the team. He's going to be the new Orlando Skandrick because Anthony Brown, I think, is going to get another contract. I just think he's just going to be a stable person. But you got guys right now on the roster that are coming out and expiring contracts, and they have to play really good to see if the Cowboys were going to extend them, especially with the new staff. So everybody has to show and prove. But let's listen to Mike Nolan because everybody's talking to 4 3 3 4. They talked about looking at Drake and Patrick today, which I said they would. But let's listen to Mike Nolan right quick, see what he's got to say. Now, if you haven't heard the interview, maybe you have. But if you have not, just listen to what Mike Nolan got to say. And then we're going to listen to my Al Harris and then my final thoughts on uh, Chris Ressery. Yeah, I, t- I tell you what, three, four, and four, three is really how is really Check good it out. personnel decision to get your best eleven on the field. Outside of that, it's just spacing between the eleven players you have. All the three, four teams and the four, three teams play a lot of the same fronts. Uh, but I've always believed it's about be- getting your best eleven on the field, and from there, whether that entails you calling yourself a three, four, or a four, three, you want to get those best guy- the best eleven out there. After that, like I said, it's just spacing. You know, you can line up a 3-4 personnel, as, as some teams do, and it looks just like a 4-3. And people talk about them as a 4-3, or as a 3-4, rather, but they really are the opposite. So it's, like I said, getting your best 11 on the field is the key, and then the spacing from there is, it can be either one. What about from a coverage point of view? Do you prefer aggressive man-to-man or more You know, that's a great question because, again, everyone – most often talks about the front and all, but the back end's critical in winning football games. I think you do have to have a mix. I believe if you, if you, you know, peg yourself too much in just one hole about doing one thing, uh, that's easy for the best quarterbacks to, to, you know, to dissect and take, take advantage of. So I do believe you have to have a good mix between man and zone. Uh, there's different types of mans, um, and there's different types of zones. Sorry if it goes out a little a, bit. I apologize. Sorry, I'm Mike there, but you don't want to create such a um, little you don't freeze want to up right so much quick. Volume that you really don't have an identity. But again, that's the process of getting to know your players, what you play more of and what you play less of. In a perfect world, if you could just play one play, you'd probably everyone in the league. I'd probably say, hey, I like to play one man because it's it's straight up. And if I've got the better players, you figure I'm going to win the down. But that's not always the case. And when you do play the best quarterbacks, you need to give that quarterback looks. You need to do different things. So you have to have some kind of variety uh, in order to be successful. Is the you coach in a couple of spots where your dad coached? Yeah. Here, now you're here yeah. as well. How special is that to you? Those other spots and now coming here. Well, the last spot didn't work out so well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, look, I'm excited. All right, so. You see what Mike Nolan, what they're talking about, even when you talked about, even when you heard about Stephen Jones, how it was going to be a little bit more flexible. I think that's where you have Chris Westry as a chance. So, like I said, I don't think I'm not advocating that I think this guy's going to come right in and be a starter on the team and do this and that, but he has a chance. Okay. And when you have a new philosophy, I know we've heard the same things and teams want to be ball hawks, but. One thing I do, hey, ho, we got the lunatic with a $5 holler. New coaching set of eyes and an open mind means opportunity. Players just need to be ready to take advantage of it. I totally agree with that. I mean, we <coughs> if you guys aren't excited about this new staff, you should. Let's listen to Al Harris because I was I, that's one of my biggest people that got signed was Al Harris. I like that dude. I loved him when he was at – I hate him at Philly, but I liked him when he was at Green Bay because he's a ball hawk. But just listen to what he's got to say. Be my thing is touch the ball. Is that a mentality thing? Is it an aggressiveness thing? That you can, if you do certain things schematically that you can create more turnovers, or is it just being around the football? No, it's being around the football, and it's a mentality. It's definitely a mentality. So that's why I say if you touch the ball – daily and practice, you touch the ball in the game. You practice exactly how you play. I love the Al Harris signing. I love it. I think he's going to do wonders for the, the cornerbacks, just my opinion. He was a press corner, aggressive, and I just really love Al Harris. I, 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 that's a slept-on signing. So right now I'm still just going over the game, the game tape. So by the time the guys get here, I have been I've watched all of the games and all of the practices, so I know which guys that I'm dealing with. 
good light when you have a the right way. So the meeting coaches, do you have a relationship with coaches? Talk to me. Getting a chance to blend in learn from the other coaches on the staff, how has that process been? Uh, it's been great. Uh, like I said, I think Mike has done a great job of putting his staff together. You know what I mean? Everybody's eager. You know what I mean? Eager to win, which, you know what I mean? I think it's big. So everybody's, you know, pulling towards the same goal. And I think that's big for your coaching staff. Is there a particular style of the ball game that, that you'd prefer to have? I mean, this is a team that's going to have to probably add some guys this offseason. Are there certain traits that you're looking for and what you guys want to bring in? Yeah, one. One trait. Okay. Need football players. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I need one trait, players. football players. Sorry about that blank out right quick. So if I get football players. Give me football players, dog. We need football players. The mentality of being a ball hawk, being something to play. In your mind, what constitutes? That's what I'm saying. Guys who can get the football. It doesn't necessarily have to be intercepting the ball. It can be picking up fumble, causing fumbles. You know what I mean? So, like I said, it goes back to touching the football daily in practice. You know, it transfers over into the game. So that that my, I think is a ball hawk mentality. So whatever happened, whether it's in the run game, pass game, from getting my hands on the ball, it's good. That creates the mentality. What's been your impression just walking around this building and getting used to the start? I love I love Al Harris signing. I love the Al Al Harris signing, but. Let me ask y'all thoughts about Chris Westery right quick before we're going to talk about a quick couple of things of Cowboys news, and I'm going to get out of here because I've seen all y'all talking about Jamal Adams. I've seen y'all talking about Christian Kurt, and I want to be able to get y'all read thoughts on that. But give me your thoughts on Westry. Let's, let's, we want him to succeed, man. He has a lot of good traits. I believe, hey, ho, we got a $2 holla from 43 Flex. I appreciate you, and I'm going to give you the flex right there. Appreciate you, 43 Flex. But what are your thoughts on Chris Restry? Remember how I asked y'all for a grade when we went through Joe Jackson, we went through Jalen Jelks, we went through John V. Johnson, we went through who else, Tristan Hill. What would be your grade? I know he's a practice squad guy. The odds are against him for real, for real. But what what, what are your thoughts on Westry right now? I'm asking y'all. What are your thoughts on Westry right now? And then let's talk about two other subjects, and I'm out of here. Give me your thoughts, please. What's up, Stephen Arthur? Right now, don't talk to me about anything else. I want to know what are your thoughts, because I didn't get to see because I was doing the film. I didn't get to see. But what are your thoughts on Westry? You feel good about him? Arrow pointed up in, in the in the middle or down? How about that? Arrow up for Westry in the middle or down? If you can give those symbols or signs, because it's it's 2020, you can do it on your phones right now. Give me that. The lunatic says good physical traits can always use that. Hopefully a solid B. I like it. Come on, give me, give me, give me y'all, give me some of your thoughts right now. I'd love to show this video, but I think they would hate on me. That Illuminati got me the other day. I low-key want to do it because I want to show y'all some stuff. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on him right now. I want to hear all the way up or down, 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 all the way up. Are we doing Fat Joe? Are we going all the way up? Hey, ho, we got Marvin Hargrove with the $20 holla. I'm officially on the Chris Restory support team. I feel you. Let's make this thing great with him. Appreciate you, Marvin. I'm glad you're always staying safe where you at. Go check him out, man. He's going to be okay. I'm telling you, the staff can develop him too. I want to show you these highlights so bad, but I feel like they're going to hate on me. Lord, should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? Cast territory could be four down territory. 
Lord, if the Illuminati get me, y'all know why. I can't help it. I got to I got I got I got to show y'all a little bit of him. See him up at the top. You see that arrow where he's at? Big and long. If, and, and if you see, it's a lot of cover over there. Appreciate you, Daryl. Yeah, you right, T-Smooth. Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. They're gonna try to they they're gonna try to hate. Let me stop. Let's just talk about this stuff because they're gonna hate. I just be wanting to show you because it's hard to get that all twenty two for that college boy. They be hating. You gotta really know who you're talking about. But let's let's let, let, let let's just switch up and let's talk about. It's been in the news uh, with Christian Kurt. I want to get your feelings on it. Christian Kurt, I liked him when he came out of Texas A and M. Speedster with Arizona, fast had a pretty decent career, uh, decent season last year. I think he got like sixty five catches last year. I've seen y'all been talking in the feed. It was thrown out there in the air that the Cowboys may be interested in Christian Kurt. Hey, so would you give up a the? I think it was talked about maybe what fourth, fifth, fourth round pick for Christian Kurt instead of going to uh, getting a receiver, get a Christian Kurt. Um, go after Jamal Adams, and we'll talk about that because I've been on that train since last year. But would you go after a Christian Kurt? Your thoughts? Would you do a Christian Kurt, trade a fourth round pick for a Christian Kurt, and then say, "Well, we'll be done with that. We got our receivers. We don't worry about anything else." Or no to Christian Kurt, and let's go ahead and draft one of these guys in this draft this year. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, I'll spend a fourth round pick for a Christian Kurt, or no. I'm not doing that. Let me go in the draft and get one of these guys. What are your thoughts? Give me your thoughts. Yeah, I ain't pissing off the Illuminati. I got you. I'm not pissing off Illuminati. They will smack the shit out of you. I'm not pissing them off. So, Davion Carr says no more than a fifth. Skywalker, what's up with you, dog? What's up with you? Kirk will be a nice guy. I told you I liked him. T. Smooth says a fifth. Stevie Mack, 23, says maybe a fourth-round pick, but that's a loop the most. Martin Kitchen says a fifth. 43 Flex says a fifth. Jacob Trevino, hell yeah, give up a fifth comp pick a receiver. I ain't giving up two for him. F.A.R. Rude, yes. Leroy Pearson, Jr., fifth-round Kirk. John Jones, a lot of people, y'all y'all like the Kirk pick, huh? Y'all like going after Kirk? Uh, y'all like that Kirk, huh? I said speed kills with John Vay, but you got a guy in Kirk. I think, didn't he have, if I'm not correct, somebody tell me, didn't he have like 65, 70 catches last year? It was only his second year, right? Second year from, and he's a speedster. He's a burner. That would help your, and here's the thing. If you were to go after Kirk, right, and spend a fourth or a fifth, here's the thing. I think it doesn't hurt you because you have a slot guy. Okay, you have a speedster and you have a guy that plays special teams because Kirk, when he was at Texas A&M, he was a punt returner and I believe he turned return kicks, but I know he returned punts and I know he returned kicks too. So you have a dynamic guy that can do all three things. So when you talk about a Tavon Austin that my guy mentioned earlier on my Twitter, shout out to you, uh, Marvin Mink, uh, Mink, I believe he sent it to me, but you got a guy and you had in Tavon Austin who's about 30 years old you trade and get a Kirk on a fourth or fifth round pick. You trade and get a Kirk. You got somebody who's just not going to play receiver in the slot. You got a dynamic guy who's as a burner, and you can play him on punt returns and kick returns. So you are getting a lot of bang for your buck if you do it. There we go, Delunatic. Yes, sixty-eight catches, seven hundred nine yards, three TDs. Not bad. Y'all feeling Kirk? Sheila says, yeah. <clears throat> All right, now, so let me get to this right quick, and, and let me get to this because everybody's been talking about it. Everybody's been talking about it. Everybody's been talking about it. 
Jamal Adams, I I ain't been I haven't let it go. I just didn't want to keep talking about it because I felt like, you know what? Why well, keep talking about this thing, man? And it, and ain't nothing materialized yet. Do y'all really realistically think that we can get Jamal? Cowboys need to make this shit happen. Like this is one I know Earl Earl Thomas that used the back and forth to get his deal with Baltimore, but Earl Thomas was hitting thirty. Jamal Adams is not. Y'all get what I'm saying? Jamal Adams is 24 years old, and I don't care. I follow him on Twitter. That dude is passionate, dog. He's an animal. The Cowboys got to do whatever they got to do to figure that out. And if they're just talking about a 17th pick, people are like, no, I'm not trading a 17th pick for Jamal Adams. Are you crazy? What? You can take that 17th pick like yesterday. If all you said is, Give me Jamal Adams in a 17th pick. We are winning. Yeah, it's going to cost. It's going to cost a little bit. But here's my thing. I've seen a lot of other NFL teams out there that are not scared. I posted a a post from um, where the Seattle Seahawks, they have traded their last, I don't think they've, since 2012, I think they have traded their first round pick every single year since 2012. Seattle Seahawks. Do it look like they're losing right now? They're competitive every year. Does it sound like they know what they're doing? I understand first round picks mean a lot. I know. But you have a guaranteed dude. I made this video four months ago about Jamal Adams when I had Patrick Walker on my show. Patrick Walker said, get that dude. I'm telling you, get that dude. I even said, do a straight-up trade. Not saying sh- do it, but if it was out there, straight-up trade Tyron Smith for him. You got to get this dude. I, I, if you, you don't have to give up a Tyron Smith to get him, but you got to get this dude. You have to get Jamal Adams. It's been talked about for too long. And I, and it, you heard what it said. Let me, let, me, let me scroll down here. The Cowboys, in principle, were having an offer for Adams. But the Jets, it's the Jets. It's the Jets. They want to act weird. I mean, hell, think about it. If you have a Jamal Adams, I'm not even hating on Xavier Woods right now, okay? I'm not hating on you, Xavier Woods. But if they said, well, let's swap out a safety because we're losing a safety, take your ass, excuse my language, but take Xavier Woods. Take him right now. Take that 17th pick, and if you need a pick in 2022, what, second rounder, third rounder, take that. You'll be okay. Like, the Cowboys need to make this thing happen with Jamal Adams. No ifs, ands, or buts. They played around with the last year, and like I said, I know they missed out on Earl Thomas, but he has a higher ceiling than Earl Thomas right now because Earl Thomas is 30. They missed out on Mika Fitzpatrick, and you see what he did. He was a dog with Pittsburgh. They missed out on him, okay? Three's a charm. Three's a charm. You cannot miss out on Jamal Adams. This dude is going to change your whole defense. I don't give a hell. He's a Texas boy. He's 24 years old. You don't tell me he's not going to make that back end. You're set. And... If you, let's say, you got rid of Woods, you traded out Woods, you traded your 17th pick, you got rid of Woods, and let's say you gave up a 2022 pick, uh, second or third rounder. You got ha-ha Dix for one year. He's your free safety. Jamal Adams is your strong safety. Are you feeling bad about that for a year to figure out what you're going to do beyond that? No. So you get the Adams, you get Adams, <clears throat> You could still go out and get a Kirk if you wanted to. You're feeling good. You could drive offensive linemen. You could still get a corner. You can get a corner. There, 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 there are enough corners in here that you can get one in a later part of the draft. You're okay. Go get Jamal Adams. I said it before last year when they soon they sniffed it and smelt it, like when they when they had Mika Kirkpatrick. Go get Jamal Adams because he's not pigeonholed to me. As just a strong safety. He's a guy that, if you watched last year, he played in the slot. He's a blitzer. He's a tackler. He can do multiple things for your defense. And you have a whole new staff that actually knows what the hell to do with your guys. You have a staff, and I'm not disrespecting the last staff, um, because I believe when I keep on talking about the 2019 class, 
the reason why people are dogging the 2019 class and I was frustrated with it was because the pressure. I feel like the coaches, because when we look at 2018, 2018 was a great season for the defense, right? Everybody was talking about the defense in 2018. It fell off after one year, and I believe it was just too much pressure on them guys, and they choked. Now I feel like there's going to be pressure on these guys, but now you have – you're going to have at least a little bit of a buffer of a few years with Jerry Jones. So if that is the case, get out there and make this happen and make the splash. I said the Cowboys are going to make the splash. The last three to four months, the Cowboys were going to make a splash. This is the splash that they need to make. And I hear about the extension. He wants to be the highest paid safety, blah, blah, blah. But when you're the best, you got to get paid like the best. That's just a fact. And the Cowboys are going to have more money next year. They can make this happen. Cowboys, go do this now. <clears throat> Here's the thing. If you're going to get uh, some – <clears throat> Listen, I understand you guys when we talk about the draft picks. I understand it. <clears throat> People are scared to give up these picks. <clears throat> if you're scared to go to if you're scared to go to church. That's how I feel about this. This is a gambling business, man. This is the NFL, like it's the NBA. This is a gambling business. You got to take gambles in this business. Jerry Jones took a gamble when he took on the Cowboys when they were worth only like a six hundred million and now they're worth a billion. You got to take chances in this business. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But conservative don't work. How long have we seen that with Jason Garrett? How long have we seen that with Jason Garrett that conservative don't work? Every time the Cowboys went conservative, it didn't work. It didn't work this past year, and that's why the Cowboys were 8-8 eight eight, because their asses went conservative. Now, I'm not saying sell the whole damn farm, but if you got to give up a first-round pick, a 17th pick, maybe throw a player in and give up a next-year pick, man, do that. Because every pick that you pick up, there's no guarantee for a Grant Delpit. There's no guarantee for a McKinney. There's no guarantee for none of these players. As good as they are in college, it's a trajectory of what you think. I don't care. I've coached long enough where I've seen players where I thought, man, this kid can be really good. And then guess what? He doesn't end up being anything because it could be a mentality. He could be, you know what, great without pads. He put pads on. He don't want that work. It's a whole lot of mother, a whole lot of factors that go into that. My thing is like this. If you got a dog out there that's saying, and I don't care, that new, that new general uh, Douglas cat, he wants picks. And that's what the Raiders did. Everybody was talking about the Raiders were crazy. The Raiders were crazy. You got John, John Gruden. You trade Khalil Mack. You trade this guy. You give up this. But they got those picks back. They made them flex, right? Okay, so you give up a pick, but you are getting a dog that is in his early years. It's not like you're getting a dude that's 29, 20, 28, 29, 30 years old. This is a dude that didn't even touch his prime. Just like when they went out there and got Amari Cooper, you got Amari Cooper when he's young. And guess what? They re-signed Amari Cooper. You don't feel bad about it. You know why? Because he's still young. He paid Amari Cooper a lot of money. But guess what? He's still young, so you feel good about it, and you know he's a dog. Sometimes you're going to have to play players. You can't just get all regular players. Some of your players are going to have to be dogs, and this is one who's a dog, and this can actually happen. The Cowboys are interested. They have to make this happen this year. I don't, I don't think they have to really sell the farm. Hopefully they don't, but they got to make this happen with Jamal Adams, period, point blank, facts. And it really has been up to just the whole damn time. Hey, ho, Tavis Banks with the $5 holla. But you know the Cowboys don't like to pay like the best in the market. Look at Zach. Look at Zeke and now Dak. I feel you, Tavis. But look, they paid Zeke, though. We talking about how they don't like paying players. Did Demarcus Lawrence get paid? Did Travis Frederick get paid? Did Zach Martin get paid? Tyron Smith got paid? Everybody is getting paid. So it's not like they're not shelling out money to these other guys. These are all, are, are Zach Martin, all these guys are the tops of the position. They're getting paid like that. That's what happens when you're the top of your position, okay? And you have a guy that could be on your back end for the next 
eight to ten years. At least eight, five to eight years. Good, strong ceiling. You don't have to worry about your safety. You can go get another free safety. You don't have to worry about everybody screaming, we don't got a safety. We don't. You got one. Jamal Adams, spend the money to get him. Spend the picks. Cowboys, you're not going to fall off because you gave up your 17th pick and a pick next year. If you think you're going to fall off because of that, then your team wasn't good. You've invested. Your offensive line is in their prime. You're trying to build that defense back up to where it was at 2018. You got a dog that you can go out there and get. Get him. You got a new staff that can bring, I believe, the even best out of him. You don't have that old staff where you were dealing with the old things. You got a new minds up in there. Why not go get a dog to make it better? Y'all feeling me, man? Y'all got to feel me on that. But. No, I hey Ori, I'm gonna tell you right now, any staff is going to if you have any staff, any staff is gonna want a Jamal Adams. I don't give a hell who you are. Any staff is gonna want a Jamal Adams. He's that damn good. Any staff is gonna want an Adams. He works his ass off. He man, no. Any staff is gonna want a Jamal Adams, dog, because he puts it he puts he lays it on the line. He works his ass off. That's what I love about him. I believe he's a leader. I believe he's a dog. No. And he was a dog in college. He came in. He's a dog. He's an all pro. He's a dog. No. I believe you got to stay with that. Mm -mm. New staff ain't going to say, no, we're not going to get a Jamal Adams because we're going to go get a Grant Grant Delpit. I'm sorry. I'm not doing that. Okay. I know Grant can play the free or Xavier McKinney. I like McKinney. I think he's a good player, and I think he's going to be a good player in the NFL. But if you got a Jamal Adams who's guaranteed, there's no guarantee with Xavier uh, McKinney. As much as you like these players, even Isaiah Simmons or all these guys, or Joe Burrow, Chase Young, all of them, they are dogs, yes. But you don't know what they're going to do in the pros. You're taking that chance. You know what you have even when you saw a Christian Kirk. You know what you have in that. So if you say, well, I'm not going to spend a pick – on a receiver, and I'm going to get Christian Kurt. Well, you know what you have. He's producing the NFL, so you know what you have in that. Okay? Jamal Adams, you know what you have in him. So there's no doubt and guessing. So I'm not going to be tripping to spend picks on him because I know what I have. I have a dog. What up, KG? But like I said, this is all on the Jets, man. If the Jets want to act stupid and act all goofy and all that stuff, that's just what's going to be in Dallas. Is we'll be in the same situation. So hopefully, you know, the Jets don't talk crazy out their mind um, because that's just stupid. I hope they don't do that. But you know how these NFL teams, though, if they feel like you really want a player and you feel like you really want to go after him, they start raising up the price just like anything else in the world. So we'll see what happens. So, but. To end this all out, I appreciate everybody in here. Don't just drop off because I want to tell everybody in the feed something right quick. Thank you. But my thoughts is let's make something happen with Westry. I think he can be a good addition later on down the line. But first, I want to tell you guys, the memberships will be starting next week. Um, The phone line, I have my phone number. I've had the phone number. But I still had to take care of some things first. But please, if you want to become, please become a member of Silver and Blue Nation. I appreciate all the donations that we've been popping off since I've been doing this thing, man. And um, I really want to give back to you guys, and I really want you to listen to this. Um, so I, I've been in kind of cahoots. Um, last year I had, you know, opportunity to go to some games and things of that nature. But I really want to give back to you guys, especially on Cowboys uh, memorabilia, uh, footballs, uh, helmet uh, getting <clears throat> helmet opportunities and I want to have a person um, I don't know how often I'm going to be able to do this but I want to be able to give back and get somebody who's going to be a lucky winner to get them to a game uh, this year for free hopefully we have a season hopefully we have a season but if we do get on that membership 
so we can go ahead and open up this stuff so I can go ahead and give back because one lucky member is going to be able to go to a game free this year, uh, compliments of Big Game James. And I want to be able to start giving back to everybody who's helped make this channel great and getting it better. Um, and that's what I want to continue to do because I really appreciate you guys and I love you guys for everything you do, your great comments, uh, the donations, the support, the love, um, the likes, the subscriptions, everything you do. I want to be able to give back to you. And next week I'm going to be able to start that process. Uh, but what I want you to do is become a member of Silver and Blue Nation. And like I said, the more membership, uh, membership has its privileges, like I made the point before. Um, but if you become a member of the Silver and Blue Nation, doors are going to be open where I can do things for you guys. So it's going to be a big thing to become a member. Um, I, there's a lot of other people that have a lot of other stations and memberships, uh, but I want it to be golden over here, and I want to be able, like I said, to be able to give back. And I'm want, and you're going to really like it, uh, what we're going to be able to do uh, this season, um, if we have a season. Um, so we're going to open those doors for membership. Please become a member of Silver and Blue Nation. You'll see the details this week coming up. Um, and um, it, it will make it great, um, and we're going to continue this grind. So I just want to tell you I appreciate all you guys. Uh, I love you, and I want to continue to open up doors um, for um, everybody who supported me uh, from A1 Day 1 or everybody who's uh, supported me from now. I want to start to be able to give back. Like I said, football, jerseys, whatever I can do, I want to be able to, um, you know, take care of you guys like you take care of me and one thing I really want to do is one lucky uh, member is going to be able to go to a game uh, on me for free this year and I'm going to make that happen um, so we're going to get that in the works right now because I want to see the smile on your face especially if you've never been to a Cowboys game because I know what it was like when I had never been to a Cowboys game um, I went to a Cowboys game when I was young but that was when I was young I hadn't really gone to Cowboys game because I was out here in Ohio so I hadn't really been to a Cowboys game in a while. So once I got into this media field about three years ago, those doors and opportunities opened for me, and it was like no other. Um, it was like a dream come true to be able to meet players and uh, to be able to talk to people and be able to be right there in the mix um, with the boys. There's nothing like that, and I'm telling you. Um, if you've never been to a game and um, if you we uh, the, the area that I will be able to get you to, it's going to be right there on the field. Um, right there where you can touch the Cowboys, see Jerry Jones, all that good stuff. Um, so and when I got that experience, it was like second to none. I, I still, to this day, I get goosebumps about it. So I want to be able to open the doors for you guys, especially for somebody who's never been to a game. So hopefully we'll have that happen to a one lucky person, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to make it grow and, uh, you know, um, do uh, bigger and better things. Um, but uh, one last thing, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Um uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, Arthur, I love you too, big dog. Love you, Marvin Hargrove. I love every one of you. Um, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Me and Skywalker still are going to be on the Dallas Cowboy for life. So I don't DC four L we do shows. We hadn't did shows for a while, but we are doing a show tomorrow. Me and Skywalker still are going to be in D DC four L. If you don't have a subscription or a membership, please get in there. I believe it doesn't cost. It's free. So, we're going to have an awesome show tomorrow. Me and Scott Walker going to be talking about a lot of Cowboys things in the draft. And then please do not forget whatever you do, you please mark this down. Mark it down. The late night hype, we didn't do it last Tuesday because we wanted to get everything prepared. We're doing our late night hype live mock draft. Me, Law Nation, Skywalker still. We're going to give our mock draft seven picks. I don't know if we're going to do trades. We might trade out of a pick. It's going to be a real fun time. You guys are going to be able to interject, and we're going to go through who we're going to make our picks in our mock draft. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful thing, and I think you guys are going to really like it and enjoy it and have a really, really fun time. It's going to be a real fun time, especially with that uh, draft coming up. And then Thursday we are doing a live draft. Um, and we're going to be going through all the picks live. Uh, me, Law Nation, and DDP did this. Hey, ho, the lunatic with a $5 holla. Thanks for all your Cowboys Inside content. Appreciate your work, Dallas Cowboy Fly. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Vach, I think he is doing solo. I think he is going to peek in, Rue Glock, uh, on ours. Uh, we talked to him, so I think he is going to peek in on ours. So we'll see how that happens uh, because we're, we're formulating it all right now. Um, but – 
uh, tune in. There's going to be a lot of other networks going on uh, with the draft, but I believe you're really going to like what we're going to bring to the table with our draft, man. We got excellent production crew with it. It's going to be dog. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, the Tuesday late night hype mock draft is going to be nasty, but I'm telling you, um, this draft that we're going to have this Thursday is going to be one of the best out there, um, bar none. And I'm not trying to, you know, disrespect anybody out there in the game, uh, but I know what our production crew and what we do over here, and it's going to be fabuloso, and you're going to really want to get get in there and check it out. So, hey, um, if you're out there looking at anybody's stuff, okay, but make sure you check ours because ours is going to be flame on fire. Uh, Y'all got fire. Y'all got flame. For sure. Appreciate Martin uh, Hitchens. But uh, I appreciate everybody in the feed. Thank you very much. I uh, want Westry on the team. I hope he makes the team, and I hope we can do big things for him. And make sure you tune in tomorrow for DC4L. Me and Skywalker still on the ones and twos, getting that in, talking some good Cowboys talk. Uh, late night hype Tuesday draft, our mock draft, and Thursday our live, live draft show, Big Game James Silver, uh, Skywalker still, and Law Nation. It's going to be a great, uh, great week. And uh, make sure you're staying safe. Take care of yourself with this COVID. I think hopefully it might be passing soon and we can get back to football and all those good things. So um, I love y'all. Everybody tuned in. Have a great time. I'll talk to y'all. Peace.